And right now, we'll be going into a very important conversation. And we have our guest live here in the studio. We'll be talking about human psychology and behavior in cyber security. And our guest is um, Femi Aratukwale. He is a security consultant. Thank you so much Thank for joining so much. us. For having this me. Good morning, morning Nigeria, pleasure. and good morning, everyone watching High Impact TV. We're live right here. We're yes. Live. Yes, yeah. thank you. It's, it's a pleasure to have you here, you know. I promised you guys, um, was it not some few weeks ago, yeah. that I'm going to be in Nigeria and I'll make sure I do my touchdown in your studio. So we're here. Right, interesting. You know, it's good to see that you're a security consultant. That's your field of expertise. And yeah. this morning we'll be talking about um, psychology yeah. and behavior in cybersecurity. You know what? Earlier we we're talking about why that topic, why yeah, the choice I, of that topic, ask, and all yeah. of that. But to start off with, just so we have a proper understanding, when we hear human <laughs> behavior and psychology, human psychology and behavior, behavior. in cybersecurity, like how this is a bit complex. So for the people watching, so they understand better. What does that even mean? Um. All right. Let me start from saying a big good morning again, mm -hmm. and um, welcome to the new world whereby. Even if we do not want to accept it, we live with it. Even if we don't want to live with it, it's now living with us. Mm -hmm. And that is computer age, security, and everything. I will not only call myself a security consultant, but I'll call myself a security guard, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Because either you're a consultant, you're an expert or whatever, you're trying to guard something, you're trying to put safety nets around certain issues, mm -hmm. so please refer to me as a security guard. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Right. So let me okay. let me let me lower the gas so that everybody can get the drift of where I'm actually going with this. Okay. A lot of people talk about security and people talk about cyber security. In the past, what people see as security were um, our age grandfathers, you know, whereby they had their long ding guns and everything. Mm -hmm. But now you see security officers, you know, tied, sort mm -hmm. of, even be proud. They are so proud to say I'm a security consultant, I do this, I do that. Hey, what do you know? Mm -hmm. How vulnerable is your system? And the main important part of security these days is not just only the physical, now it's gone more than the physical, which everybody is now scared of. Right. And the first thing you don't want to see early in the morning is your bank account wiped right. off. Very, very For no true. reason. And the question is this. Many institutions, many financial world today are looking into how do we tackle this. But how well is our country, our great Nigerian country, tackling this? In terms of what you just mentioned, psychology, the human behavior, and how would the customer service at the other end look into this and you know, transform this into a laughing, uh, you know, into a smiley day for whoever is the victim. So this is exactly where the point is. But before we go into that, I would rather just give a simple illustration of who can fall victim. Right. Two people fell victim some years ago. It can be verified, Facebook and Google. And whatever we do around security today, whatever we do around computer today, whatever we do about internet today, who are the two people we always face or who are the two big giant tech that we always look into, Google and Facebook. Mm -hmm. So if they can fall flat, for if um, you know for a ransom of almost not even a ransom they paid with happiness a hundred million in dollars so what else again mm -hmm. are we talking about yes the whole fraud was uncovered but the deed was actually done right okay you know you were talking about cyber security yeah. and some of the things around the around fraud it, yeah. and all of yeah. that you know i would over the years, you mm -hmm. talked about you wouldn't want to wake up and see your account. I yeah. had that experience two days ago. I went to the market on Saturday, and I didn't have to look for my ATM until Sunday night when I was preparing for work for on Monday, yeah. and I couldn't find it. Mm. I searched everywhere. I couldn't find it at all, and then I had to you know, move my money into another <laughs> bank because I wasn't sure what was going to happen. Yeah. And I was even trying to block my card on the app, but it wasn't going through. So now, in cases where people get access to other people's private codes, for, for example, for accounts, what are some of the major steps 
that they need to take first of all? What's the prompt response? Um, thank you get? so much. You see, um, there's um, the financial um, industry worldwide now seems to have created a more robust way whereby things can be done easily okay. with or without anything. Number one is, do we have hotlines for certain problems online like fraud, bank missing or bank card missing or attack on my bank and stuff like that. Who are the first line of contact that you're going to key into that will look into this for you because these are emergency issues. Again, when you miss your card or maybe you lost your card or something, mm -hmm. how do you manage with your account again? Do you have alternative Account. bank account or do you have alternative email or do you have alternative password code word and all the rest so these are issues that we all need to wake up to learn and get used to but sadly even if we get used to it what about the connectivity the network to speak to the banks right how are the banks going to respond to you do you have some certain phrases that you can actually use that will make sure that okay it's you that is talking this is exactly where the human behavior now comes in because for anything to happen the bank should at least be able to read your history mm -hmm. that okay this is the pattern you use in spending your money mm -hmm. because in six months i can tell exactly how you spend your finances you know within your lifestyle right i can tell that okay this is when you get paid if you get paid this is a certain amount of money that will leave your account mm -hmm. to certain sets of people because you have some certain key people that you do transfers with your family members your brothers your sisters your husbands and many issues like these are just histories that can you know be traceable they are traceable histories but if i see anything different like 200 million to a certain name of course it will flag up but before, it's, before this has happened, let me ask you, do we have any of these patches at the back end that can actually stop this transfer before they now say, okay, fine, go through. Mm -hmm. That is, are you going to agree? That is the consent that you need to give first. So is the bank ready to give that consent or, you know, ask you, hey, we saw you with this. Is it true or not? So in some banking industry now, they've done all that. You will be shocked and surprised that even up to, let me put it like one pound, can actually be like, mm -mm, this is a red flag, something, is, no, is, wrong. something is wrong here. Mm -hmm. So they will now probably ask you or call you or ask you that, okay, call the bank, we want to ask you one thing or the other. However, sometimes some fraudulent numbers will just call randomly and ask you, put in this, put in this, put in mm -hmm. that. The best thing is this, you should have a direct number that you can actually call that please did you call me is there a problem with this or that and stuff like that right so things like this should be key right okay i want us to still on the bank yeah. or connecting it to insecurity at, yeah. at large we've seen numerous cases in our own society right now where people are kidnapped and uh, ransom is being demanded or they attack a community go away with a lot of people First off, they say, okay, you need to link your BVN, your NIN, register your SIM cards for easy tracking and all of that. But when we have cases like this, why is it that these essential numbers or documents that we've linked to our phone numbers, our bank accounts cannot be traced? For people that have their loved ones kidnapped and they are demanding ransom and it's being transferred or they even have to withdraw huge amounts of money from the bank, how come those questions are not being asked and these transactions just fall through without any traces? Okay, um, thank you for this sensitive question. And I would say it's a very sensitive question. And mm -hmm. I think I would rather prefer if the NSA to the country is actually listening right now, mm -hmm. this answer is for him. Okay. And the answer to that is this. The NSA needs to have its own grip on what I call the GRC. Okay. And the GRC simply means governance, risk, and compliance. We feel that completely. Governance, risk, and, and compliance. compliance. Yes, okay. we've already filled that in Nigeria today. Some banks, yes, and in some places, no. Because uh, what, I'm, what I'm trying to let um, viewers understand is this. How do we comply with the way we do our internet and everything? And what are the risks associated with it? Again, the governance part is this. What is the government build up in making sure that yes, certain things are actually done to avoid or you know avoid the risk so that we can comply with how things are done? Yes, BVN is there, NIN is there, 
which one is there again? Um, national yes, identity card yes. number. Mm -hmm. Is there your passport number? Is there? How? Why are we not linking all these stuffs together so that we can have a robust database? And the question is this: Do we actually have a database in Nigeria? That's a very big question. A One million dollar question. Do we? If we think we do have, yes, a department seems to have it. Um, that's the immigration. Mm -hmm. Yes, a department seems to have it in Nigeria. That is our schools because they have your matriculation names and numbers and stuff. But how functioning are all these numbers after a while? That is still not all. But what about police? What about the prison correctional facilities? Do they have it? So this is where the interior minister again now comes in that hang on a minute. This is another red flag for me. If people go to police, they report cases. Do they take their fingerprints? so that they can actually link it to immigration that, okay, the person talking is the person on this identity. Mm -hmm. So this is exactly where something that comes in again, which I call the IAM, Information Asset Management. How do we marry this to behavior, psychology, cyber security? Because with all these, information are easily processed. And once you're able to process all this, it becomes simple. Mm. So if I'm talking to you, you know that, okay, fine, this is Femi talking to you. But if things are not matching up, then you can really say, no, this is not this, this is not that. Based on what you said, ransom paid, where are the money going into? Where exactly. are the transfers going into? So these are key questions the banks should be answering. The minister for, uh, is the finance minister, financial finance minister, should be answering this question, then again, the communication minister should equally be involved. Mm. That is still not all. The IG, the, the immigration as well, everybody seems to have a role to play when it comes to cybersecurity threats that we have in our country today. This is exactly where the governance, the G, now comes in. Then what about the risk associated with this? If we try to transform all this to our top party or to vendors and to banks and other institutions, how do we manage all these risks with them? And this is where the member of the public now comes in. Can we comply with the rules mm -hmm. that they're going to set up? And what are the rules? Okay, I want you guys to have a little training to understand how cybersecurity can actually work so that you don't attack your television system, they don't attack this, they don't attack that, because it can happen. Right, you know. Just so like as, I said. Yeah, as we wrap this up, you know, the topic is uh, human psychology, yeah. you know, and behavioral pattern when it yeah. comes to security. Now, um, how does an emotion like fear and anxiety impact uh, security behavior? Uh, thank you. That's what you call um, insecurity. That's what you call the panic attack. And the panic attack is this, if I want to just, you know, make things look real to you, it's just for me to put out a blog or something and put a link. Like, oh, in Ilupeju today, the chairman local government will be sharing, um, let me give a tune of, I'll look for something that we know people are actually looking for, 50,000 bags of rice. Mm. Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> what do you think rice, will happen? Uh, link. Just link, put in your N9, put in this, put in that. Everybody, bam. Jump and that's on where in. psychology That comes is from. where it now comes exactly. in. But the question is this. In local, local governments, do you actually put something like this out? Ah. Do we know? No. So, who is picking up this from a local, local government? Hey, stop it. This is an attack. This is this. This is that. But don't get me wrong. They're going to make the website, everything look as if it's a local. Mm -hmm. But something would definitely not link it up together. So, this is so, where the human being... My own understanding is because we use our emotions mm -hmm. to, get. to get into the system. So how, how do you detect fraud then? How do you detect fraud? Yeah. The only way you tell up because at the end of the day, they're going to be asking you different questions okay. to answer before they can say, okay, you've been approved to come and take one bag of rice or this or that at A, X, Y, Z location. Ah. Now think about it. The location they are saying, are you going to be kidnapped there or yeah. is there even something happening there? So okay. things like this are issues we need to think about. This is where the human psychology now comes in. Yeah. Using our emotions, you know, to play around with us is key. And when this happens, we always fall victim. Mm. Right. Uh, just before we go now, what are some of the ethical implications of using psychological 
manipulation in cybersecurity? It, it falls in different ways. You know, when it comes to ethical behavior and ethical manipulation, it's, it's still around how do we think, what exactly are you doing with your system all the time. So they use what you're doing all the time. Look at Instagram now. Whatever you put on Instagram, if they see you putting a thing, if, they, you know, if you put it too much on it, every minute you just see the same thing flashing up like, if you see someone, you know, talking about food, food, food all the time, what do you think will be happening in your social media? Everything about food. Mm -hmm. Your FYP will just... You know, food. will just be coming in. So if you talk about schools all the time, anything around schools will be coming in. So ethically, a lot does happen, but it all depends on our cognitive behavior mm -hmm. and how biased we won't be or we can be, not to just, you know, fall into certain things that right. we're doing. Okay, in one minute, just in one yeah. minute, what are some of the things you tell our viewers out there to look out for or things to do to avoid falling victim of cases like this? Well, um, I think the first thing I'll just let people know is this. When you see some kind of, you know, um, security pop-up updates on your phones or your virtual machines or your computers, please be very careful not to just log okay. in on it because once you log in, it might probably be a phishing attack. It could be any kind of attack and the next thing is ransomware or whatever will start popping up on your system. You can actually, you know, just take control of your system whereby the system is breached or you might probably be asked to pay some ransom whereby you don't even know where it's going to, maybe through Bitcoin and all the rest. So all this can be averted if we can only do one thing, try to be responsible and be reasonable how we use our system, we live with it now, so we have to just take full responsibilities how we make use of it. Right. Quite an insightful one there, I must say. Mm -hmm. Would have really loved to continue, but unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, we have it's to all right. wrap it up with you this morning. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, Premier Arashko Ali. Thank you. Thank you so Security much. guard. Guard, yeah. For That's <laughs> on the show today, it's going to so delight. Much. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much.